it, it's maybe helpful to kind of like sketch out a vision of each of the theories um, yeah. as kind of how they respond to in the sense of where they're grounded. Okay. So the and it, Turiel started with it's about harm, right? It's about harm. So you can't punch your brother. That's wrong. No matter what, the teacher says you can punch your brother, still wrong, right? Um, and so Kohlberg also suggested. Uh, at the time that it's also kind of about harm, about kind of like reasoning and harm. So we had reasoning and harm. So when things are wrong or things that are wrong are wrong because you reason that they are harmful. And so then Hyde came along and said, um, well, things are wrong just because you get this gut feeling that it's, that it's wrong, that it's bad, right? So if you get a gut feeling for some reason other than it's being harmful, like thinking of having sex with your sister, well, that's still legitimately wrong, even if it's not harmful in a kind of like reasoning sense. And that's where we get to things like moral dump dunning, right? When I like think it's wrong to have sex with my sister, even though I can't say why it's wrong because it's not harmful. Though, as we'll get to it, people certainly see it as harmful, right? And so moral foundation theory grows off of that and says, well, there's five different things in your, in your brain or your mind that give rise to these feelings of badness. And each of those things is like a, is a lock to a key in the environment. And if you see someone do something like kick a dog, that feels bad for harm reasons. And if you see someone have sex with their sister, well, that's wrong for a purity reason. Um, and liberals and conservatives maybe differ on, on, on how many locks they have available or how many light switches or taste buds or whatever analogy um, that, that you want to point to that John often uses. So I think you know it, it paints a pluralistic view of the moral world. And I think that is really correct, right? There are lots of things in the moral world that we think are wrong and they're not just about physical violence, right? Or emotional harm, right? There's lots of religious things that seem wrong. There's lots of interpersonal things that seem wrong, right? So it, he kind of broadened the moral domain of the world. But to do that, he also, made a step in the moral mind, which I think is a mistake, right? And I think the step in the mind is to say, well, if there's these differences in, in the world, then there must be dedicated circuits or mechanisms in the mind that make sense of those differences in the, in the world, right? Like we must have a lock for every kind of key. And so, right, he said that there's five different foundations, right? And, and, or six or, or three in previous work, right? So there's a number of things that we, we hold to. And dyadic morality suggests that even if there's, there's richness in the moral world and pluralism is obviously true, that you can get all those differences with a set of basic ingredients that you combine to give rise to richness. So just like with you know, chemistry, you can take a set of common small building blocks and combine those together to get a richness of elements and compounds and so forth. So too with morality, can we take a basic set of ingredients. And these ingredients aren't atoms, but they're, they're perceptions, right? And those perceptions are of someone who, uh, an agent, someone with intention, causing damage to a vulnerable patient, right? So those two things together form a diet, an agent and a patient, right? And one harms the other. And, and that's a template that kind of, you could imagine if you want to go to Kahneman as a kind of heuristic, right? But not a heuristic in a, in a way that's like derogatory or dismissive. It's just a way that the human mind makes sense of morality, all the richness of our moral worlds, we see them through this common template. And almost everything we've examined, in fact, fits this template. So the important point to keep in mind about didactic morality, right, which argues that perceptions of harm underlie ultimately all of our moral judgments at a cognitive level, right? Not the descriptive level where you see, right, Maybe one person kicks another person or one brother has sex with a sister, right? Actions are clearly different and you can categorize those actions differently as John has, but ultimately in the mind, what drives those understandings of wrongness are perceptions of harm. And so our data show again and again that people judge acts as wrong to the extent that they intuitively and in some sense effectively, your emotions, view those as harmful. So the move we made with dyadic morality is in fact the same move that John made, right? John says, look, morality is intuitive, it's affective, and it's culturally bound. And so he says, well, it can't be about harm because harm is about reasoning. And we just said, well, harm is also those things, 
right? Harm is intuitive, it's affect, and if it's culturally bound. And so now it turns out that if you have this broader conception of harm, you can make sense of the moral world. And in if fact, it's just... even better because it happens to be true. You can click here to watch the full interview, or you can listen to it on all the major podcasting platforms. The links are down below, or you can just search for Ideas Sleep Furiously. Thank you.